people welcome to the session i hope all of you guys are doing amazingly well as always and uh, yes your preparations are also going good at full speed full fledged because you still have a good one month left before your science exam starts so i'm hoping that you guys are completely prepared and yes if you're feeling any sort of difficulty always reach out to us because we are here for you guys uh, we have a lot of amazing things planned for you people so do not forget to subscribe because we have already uh, kick started with the sprint text and now we're doing the short short questions lots of amazing things for your exam preparation so make sure you subscribe to that as well anyways today i'm not here to talk about subscription because today i'm going to talk about some important questions that can be possibly asked in your boards from magnetic effects of electric current so we're going to do some short short questions which i feel which we all feel that has a very high probability of you know of appearing in your examinations so we'll keep that in our mind and try to do these questions to the best of our knowledge now i want you guys to do the questions with me so along with me i want you people also to try and solve these questions because it's important that you do so so that the more you practice the better and easier it gets right so with that said people let's get into the first question shall we so i've divided the questions into three portions we have the two mark questions three mark questions and the five mark questions as always because that's how it's going to be for your finals as well so keeping that in our mind we'll go with that right so we'll start with the two mark questions we'll move on to the three mark questions and then we will move on to the five markers so let's start with the two mark questions shall we all right people so here is the first question for the day what does the direction of the thumb indicate in the right hand thumb rule and in what way this rule is different from the fleming's left hand rule so you have to find out we have to tell you or you have to uh, state the difference between fleming's left hand rule and right hand thumb rule which would again give you one mark so you don't have to go into the details of it because it's a two mark question and then you also have to mention what does the thumb indicate in the right hand thumb rule which i'm believing that you guys already know of because you guys know that all thumb rules all the hand rules are very very important so i'm guessing that you've already uh, you know you're pretty much familiar with this keeping that in mind guys let's go on and answer this question so what does the direction in the thumb right and thumb rule indicate so the thumb basically we will indicates the direction of the current so if you were to hold a conductor a straight current carrying conductor the thumb will show the direction of current and all the enveloping fingers that are there they show the direction of the magnetic field around that straight current carrying conductor so that's a very simple question i'm pretty sure you've already gotten that right now to talk about the difference between the uh, you know the right hand thumb rule and fleming's left hand rule there's a massive difference see a right hand thumb rule is used to find out the direction of the magnetic field of a straight current carrying conductor whereas fleming's left hand rule is used for a completely bizarre reason it's it's actually used for what it is used to find out the direction of force acting on a current carrying conductor which is placed in an external magnetic field so there's a huge difference between the two now, if you want to mention it further you can actually mention it so you can say that the you know according to fleming's left hand rule the thumb indicates the direction of force the index finger shows the direction of the magnetic field and the middle finger shows the direction of the current so you can again if you want to go in a little deeper and explain a little further absolutely fine but then you also have to think about the marks and the time that you get you get a very short amount of time to finish off uh, physics bio and chemistry and on top of that it's only a two more questions so i would suggest you to keep it short and simple short and sweet is always a you know right way to go when it comes to these kind of questions okay so i believe you've already gotten that right hats off to all of those who got it right let's move to the second question shall we all right so here is a second question people what change in the deflection of the compass needle placed at a point near current carrying straight conductor shall be observed if the current through the conductor is increased what change let's say you have a needle you have a straight current carrying conductor and you have placed a needle you know that compass wala needle the directional compass you've placed it right next to it what changes would you be able to see if firstly you increase the current through the conductor second the direction of current in the conductor is reversed if you change the direction of current what would happen 
last but not the least the compass is moved away from the conductor so three separate question but still two marks which means that again you don't have to go into the details just mention what you feel is right i think that's way more than enough because it's only a two mark question so let's go ahead and answer this one real i'm pretty sure you've already uh, figured it out by now but i'll just write it down anyways for my man shanti for my satisfaction here's the first one current through the if the current is increased what would happen to the deflection you would be able to see greater deflection there'll be more deflection in the needle the the comp the needle inside the compass would deflect further more why because it has a stronger magnetic field right now more the current more the magnetic field so that's the answer for that second part of the question is what would happen to the direction of current if the conduct the direction of current is reversed if the direction of current is reversed the magnetic field will also reverse which means that the deflection will also change the deflection will be in the opposite direction opposite direction so initially it was going like this let's say now because the direction of current has changed the direction of magnetic field will change which means that this deflection will be in the opposite direction so that's exactly what's going to happen to the needle last but not the least people what would happen if you were to move the compass away from the conductor we know that as you go further and further away from a conductor the magnetic field gets weaker and weaker so what will happen the deflection will actually decrease there'll be lesser deflection the deflection as you go further and further away would have would would reduce the magnitude would actually decrease why because the magnetic field is getting weaker and we weaker so that would be the answer for that so deflection would decrease simple again it's a two mark question uh, but yes uh, two marks but three different parts so you can uh, you know you don't have to do a lot of explanations just write in simple words that would suffice all right people so that is the end of the two mark questions now let's go on to the three markers we're not done yet people we're not done yet so don't leave because we have a lot of amazing questions in store so let's go to the third the three mark questions now three mark questions again you have to explain a little bit more than the two markers because it's a three mark question more marks more explanation more rathamar more uh, uh, you have to you know write mahabharat and uh, ramayana stories so here's the first question meena draws magnetic field lines of field close to the axis of a current carrying circular loop as she moves away from the center of the circular loop she observes that the line keeps on diverging how will you explain her observation wa meena ji wa kya observation hai so here is the thing guys it's actually a very simple concept we know that in a circular loop near the conductor near the coil if you have if you have a uh, let's say a cardboard sheet and you've sprinkled some iron filings on it near the wire near exactly over there you will be able to see concentric circles but as you go further and further in like in the sense if you were to go to the center it'll keep on diverging it'll get smaller and smaller in fact at the center it's going to be a straight line now the question is how would you explain this it's as simple as this we know that in a circular loop near the conductor the magnetic field is very very strong near the conductor that is over here and over here the magnetic field is very strong so you can see that the concentric circles over there are way more denser but as you go towards the center you're going further and further away from the coil itself you're going further and further away from the conductor and we know that as you go further and further away from the conductor the magnetic field is going to obviously become weaker and weaker that's how it is that's how nature works so obviously as you go towards the center there'll be more diversion and that diversion means that the magnetic field over there is getting weaker and weaker and weaker as you go towards the center that is why you are able to see such a diversion now again it's a three mark question so you need to write people you need to write stories and stories and stories so uh, i don't think you'll have to write so much so it's it looks more, almost like a five mark answer but yes you have to be you know again uh, it doesn't mean that you can just beat around the bush as well our uh, teachers are pretty smart uh, yeah i'm talking about myself as well i'm very very smart you can see that i'm wearing a specs and all and people who wear specs are even you know inherently very very smart and pretty much all teachers are you know soda buddies like this so uh uh yeah be be sure to write out all the key points it does not mean that you'll just keep on writing whatever you want 
but yeah be brief be brief that's what i'm trying to tell you be as brief as possible so that they don't have any chance of cutting marks anywhere got it people all right let's go on to the next uh, question then if you want to draw the diagram that is also perfectly fine please do the diagram as well it's a three mark question so why leave it for chance draw the diagram also yes yes why not right draw two stars because you are a star no that's why get it बच्चों के मार्क्स जितने कम आते हैं पापा का वॉल्यूम उतना ही बढ़ जाता ये होती है पढ़ाई पर कभी सोचा है कि मार्क्स बढ़ाने की जिम्मेदारी सिर्फ बच्चों की क्यों अब वेदांत तो मार्क्स बढ़ाने की जिम्मेदारी लेगा वरना आपकी पूरी फीस वापस Draw three stars if you are a triple star. Okay, so let's go on to the last uh, five bar questions, people. So that's the end of the three mark question. I hope uh, you know you got it. Again, we have done. This is not the only ones, people, because we have done one session of this before this as well for electricity. Also, we have done two short short questions, and we did twenty markers, and we have done sprint text. There are ton tons and tons of amazing questions that we have done you don't just think that's our only one three mark question no 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 it's not like that because we have a lot of things that we have already done sprint text we have sprint text is going on right now we have uh, you know we have our uh, uh, you know top 20 questions and then this so there's a lot of amazing content out there if you just just check go to the uh, you know if you just go to the channel page and just scroll up and down you can find tons and tons of videos where tons and tons of amazing questions have been done so i would suggest you to go through all of them and practice all of them and practice your previous year question papers along with it so that you are you know you you are you're building your confidence every question that you do imagine that it's increasing your confidence by uh, you know at least 1% and that is what you need to focus on you need to be very very confident and that comes with more and more practice right ha <sighs> panchwa mark questions ready ho ji yes computer ji dikhaiye okay so here's the question computer ji ne dikha diya explain the construction and working of an electric motor using a well labeled diagram wow bete wow amazing question you guys know that electric motor is super duper important because generator has been removed anyways any which ways generator has been already removed so there's only one thing that they can ask from this uh, you know a short short five mark question and that is basically the working construction and uh, the diagram of a motor and please guys do not ever forget to study this do not forget to you know be a uh, very very thorough about this make sure that you do so all right anyways uh, so how do you do the okay let's let's start with the construction part the construction construction is very simple so an electric motor contains uh, you can write down uh, first of all you have to write down uh, what is an electric motor let's start with that all right what is an electric motor and elect i'm not going to write the whole thing but i'll just write in simple words and and i'll put up the notes so you can download it later right okay so the first thing you have to write is right uh, electric motor is one which converts chemical and or electrical energy to mechanical energy electrical energy to mechanical energy that is the conversion that happens the next thing that you should write is the working principle the working principle is very simple it works on the principle that when a current carrying conductor is placed in a magnetic field that conductor will experience a force that that force is what is called as lorentz force and this whole motor works on the principle of lorentz force so write down the principle as well so basically explain a little bit about lorentz force lastly draw the, then you have to draw the diagram so diagram is very simple you have two magnets let's call this is the north pole south pole you have the conducting coil or the armature coil then we have the split rings then you have the carbon brushes and connected to the carbon brush is your external circuit now you can name it as you want so you can write it as a b c d the conducting coil and you can call this uh, the carbon brush as sorry you can call the carbon brush as b1 and b2 and the split ring as r1 and r2 all right so yeah this is basically it now explain the construction so what happens when current is flowing through the a uh, conductor uh, the coil the the direction of current is b1 to r1 to a b c d then from there it is to r2 then b2 this is the direction of current 
but because current is flowing through ab ab will experience a force because it's placed between a magnetic field ab will experience a force and because of that force ab will experience a force in the downward direction whereas cd on the other hand will experience a force in the upward direction you can you have to mention it in detail people i'm just stating it because you can uh, writing this i don't really have enough space to do so so i'm guessing that you are you're able to get the deal right so i'll just uh, do one thing i'll just put this over here i hope that uh, it's better now all right so yeah i'll just have to check it all right so i'm just gonna write it over here people so you can talk about the direction of current then what happens at ad ab will experience a force in the downward direction and cd will experience a force in the upward direction and then what happens is they'll interchange their positions so now the conductor or the conducting coil would look something like this this is the conducting coil now it's d c b a with the split rings also changing its position to r2 r1 but the you know the carbon brushes would remain exactly the same this would be b2 and this would be b1 now once again cd will experience a force cd will experience a force in the downward direction because of lorentz force explain that a little and then ab will experience a force in the upward direction and this will continue to rotate over and over and over again until current is flowing through it so this is how basically a motor works so as this rotates as the split ring rotates it will be connected to a um to an axle and as the axle rotates uh, the fan blades or whatever it is that will also start to rotate so this is basically the working of it it's a five mark question so be as detailed as possible don't leave anything to chance start with what is an electric motor where and all it's used go to the principal then draw the diagram then do the explanation and that is going to get you that five marks that you require all right guys so that's pretty much it for today's session i hope you learned something new i hope you know i've uh, you know what to say i've uh from the time that you joined the session to now i hope that uh, you know there's a little bit of improvement at least at least 1% more confident you feel uh, after attending the session then the time is well spent thank you for joining today's session people i'll catch you guys in the next one uh, i'll be coming live pretty soon so i'll catch you then uh, take care of yourselves stay safe and uh, be good all the best for your exams subscribe to the channel hit the like button share the video if you found this helpful so your friends can also become enlightened all right i'll catch you guys later peace out stay safe and adios for now bye bye guys take care see you take care peace bye bye exam se pehle ghar wale shuru ho jate bata do pilo beta marks ke lena tips har koi deta hai hmm isliye vedantu improvement promise ab vedantu marks badhane ki zimmedari le warna aapki puri fees wapas